This is an experiment. For this first video, I wanted to talk about something that would be interesting enough to research, but conceptually simple enough not to make too much work for the VFX department. In the future, I'm hoping to make videos that go more in-depth on the technical details, as well as the history of both modern and retro technology, but today we're going to start off by talking about this. That's right, it's the humble quarter-inch to 3.5mm headphone adapter. If you're anything like me, you've probably got half a dozen of these sitting around and you probably don't ever really think about them. Well, it turns out these represent all kinds of history, going all the way back to, well, the start of analog audio itself. But first, let's get some terminology straight. In general, the sort of connector this is should properly be called a phone connector, and the big one is a quarter-inch connector, whereas the little one is a 3.5mm connector. The three contacts are called tip, ring, and sleeve, and connectors may also have no ring connection or even multiple ring connections. With that out of the way, let's take a closer look at this adapter. This is a real bad, cheap example, and I've taken it apart because I want to point something out. See, the way the contacts work is that you have these two little pieces that grip the tip of the 3.5mm plug, these two that contact the ring, and then the sleeve connection happens through the outside of the adapter and this little spring. That spring is the single most interesting part of the device, because it's not there by accident. It's absolutely crucial to maintaining a good connection to the sleeve on the smaller plug. And as far as I can tell, every adapter in existence has them. Well, except for one even cheaper adapter I have that doesn't work very well. Anytime you see something like this, where a commodity part is made by dozens of manufacturers, and they all include the exact same little detail, pay attention. Especially in the modern day environment of cost engineering, Anything that stays in and stays in everywhere usually represents a necessary and oftentimes elegant solution. And generally, the more features like this a part has, the more mature its development is. Both the 3.5mm and quarter inch standards are still in widespread use, the quarter inch type being more common on stereo and instrument equipment, and the 3.5mm type seeing use on all sorts of consumer electronics products, though of course not really on smartphones these days. Unsurprisingly, the 3.5mm standard is the newer one, and as far as I can tell, it was first used by a major manufacturer in Sony's 1964 EFM-117J transistor radio, and of course the personal stereo boom driven by the Sony Walkman made it ubiquitous. I don't think Sony was actually who invented it, though. I can't find any reliable source for where it came from beyond that it generally existed in the late 1950s, but I don't think Sony ever actually made their own connectors like that. Either way, though, that means we're coming up on 60 years of the 3.5mm plug, and it's basically unchanged, unless you want to get into the absolute show that is the 4-contact standards, but the 3-contact version is the same as it ever was. By far the more interesting part is the quarter-inch plug, though, and to explain that one, we're gonna have to go way back. As far as I can tell, a lot of people have the general sense that these came from telephone switchboards, hence phone connector, but there are some interesting details along the way I'd like to call attention to on the consumer electronics side. The patent for the electric guitar was filed in 1934, and if we take a look at the patent drawing, you can see that, even back then, the quarter-inch jack was the obvious choice to hook up an amplifier. In fact, it's so obvious that the patent doesn't even mention anything about the plug. Prior to that, we have early consumer radios, which started off using bare wires to connect headphones, but by 1923, eight years before radio would reach majority adoption in the United States, you could buy any number of radio sets that used a quarter-inch plug for their headphone connection. And before that, we have nothing. We've reached the start of consumer electronics. Really, prior to radio, most people just didn't have any reason to be dealing with analog electrical signals at all. But there's still the telephone system. Of course, the phones in people's houses at this time didn't have any kind of connectors on. This was a long time before the phone companies were even thinking about letting you hook your own stuff up to the phone line. But the telephone switchboard is just about as old as the telephone, and those sure do need connectors. So, when did telephone systems come up with the quarter-inch plug exactly? Well, the oldest reference to the design I could find is here, in US patent number 262701, as part of a larger diagram for a particular way to wire up a switchboard. This patent isn't about the quarter-inch plug. In fact, like with the electric guitar, the plugs on the switchboard are just an assumed feature of the design. And the patent? It's from 1882. This plug is as old as analog audio itself. Thanks for watching. As I said at the start, this video was an experiment, something simple to shoot and produce while I figure out my style and process. 
Since this time, I've done a historical deep dive on a technically simple device, I think the next video is probably going to be much more on the technical exploration side of things. That is, having a look inside a more complicated piece of equipment and understanding how it works. If that sounds like it's up your alley, go ahead and let me know. Until next time.